committee meeting, the progressive wackadoodles as uh, coined by the feathered bastard are waiting to go in and talk about progressive wackadoodle business, I guess. They have taken issue with Andrew Cherney's candidacy, and uh, there's some heated debate going on here. Here we are in the Progressive Caucus, waiting to talk about progressive issues. There's standing room only in this room, and if there's so many progressives in the Democratic Party in Arizona, how come they don't listen to us? There's Jeff Lattice, a former congressional candidate. He's the head of the Progressive Caucus. And so we'll see what sort of progressive things we talk about today in this meeting. And I do ask you guys to, to consider the problems that happen if we only recognize it in the county statute. To be able to allow the, the sitting, the incumbent chairman, the ability to appoint state committee members is a door opening for corruption and cronyism. Yes. It allows the incumbent state chair to appoint state committee members in order to advance his agenda. That's a door that opens up in this case. This is not the floor. Just the a minute. Down. You don't have the floor. No. You don't have, have the floor. Have I have the floor. You're out of order. Yeah. I want to hear what you're saying. The bottom line is, um, now that I've been distracted, <laughs> the, the problem is it does open this door for corruption. I'm not implying that that's happening today. In the future, it definitely can happen. And that's the reason why you can only be an elected PC because you represent that group of people who elected you and nobody else. It also allows the state chair to actually appoint members to be state committee members in between the primary and this meeting who can actually run for office, and he can deny those that are opponents to his agenda, he can deny them the ability to be a state committee member running for office. So, to me this is about power. We all as state committee members at this meeting share the same amount of power, it doesn't matter if you're the state chair or a normal state committee member like me, we all have one vote. And to give this opportunity for the chair to actually have that much power robs us of our power. And we shouldn't allow this. This is the basic foundation of democracy that we're debating right here. And it's about us. I want to take this from a larger picture. One of the things that I think I really object to in our current society is the fact that if it's gets through legal, um, you know, okay, then it's moral or ethical, okay? And this is one thing where I disagree with a lot of the Republican tactics. They do anything they want, anything, and if they are never convicted, then they're promoted. <laughs> and this is not something that I want to be a part of. I want my party to be true to our laws, be true to our processes, and do things in a manner that doesn't, um, in other words, as uh, she said and as Jeff said, if I walked through the door and wasn't appointed, you know, an appointed PC and wanted to circumvent that process, would all these people be supporting me? Or does it have to be someone like Sam Coppersmith or Jim Peterson or Andre Chan? Good point. Here, oh. here. Uh, we need to do what's ethical and in the, the best interest of our long-term growth as a party. Okay, the progressives are switching rooms. Uh, the standing room only in the other room. Uh, Attorney Bill Reiser from Pima County started giving an opinion, a legal opinion, about Andrew Cherney's eligibility, and he claims that according to the bylaws, it's pretty darn clear he's not eligible. Uh, one woman stood up and tried to disrupt him, uh, made a motion to move or adjourn, and we are moving to a different room uh, because of that motion. It's uh, pretty heated. There's a lot of people on both sides, and it'll be pretty interesting to see what happens. Conversations everywhere. Here's Andre Cherney talking to some Peter County folks. Uh, both uh, candidates' speeches were well received, and we'll see what happens. Uh, the vote is in about an hour, actually, and it's uh, totally in dispute what's going to go on. So. See what happens with
progressives and kind of continue the um, debate, I guess. Everybody is actively debating here. Everybody's talking about it, wondering about why this was not made clear earlier before Andre was um, elected. Lots and lots of conversations. Until people who me in power wanted a candidate other than Rodney. Martin McCall in 2006, when I asked in December to be a state appointed commissioner, to be appointed as a PC and then appointed to state, state committee, Martin McCall and then Ward Wallingford said, I can't do it until after the January meeting. Wood Sanders said that to me too in regard to somebody else. When are, were they always, that seemed to be the common understanding that everybody had, that you you could appoint PCs only after the statutory organization. And that was told to me by people who have been in this party for a long time. And I wonder, were they just simply wrong? you, you got to just, you got to have two different things here. Ask Martin what he thinks today, because we, he was in the meeting earlier today, and he agrees with us now. Um, but here's the fact. The fact is, is there are two organizational meetings we're talking about. So I cannot appoint a PC in Pima County until after we do our organizational meetings. Once we're done with that, if I find a vacancy, then I can appoint somebody to that vacancy. And by the same token, if I find a vacancy in the state committee, I can appoint that person to the state committee. And re well, it's actually called a recommendation, and then that goes to the chair of the state party who then signs off on it. Okay. Yeah, this is kind of interesting from Jeff because I know two people who were told they couldn't be appointed until after this meeting in Phoenix. Uh, you know, I know there's a lot of people saying that the party set this up and they recruited on attorney and they went and recruited the, the legal opinion, but I know for a fact that at least two of my friends that were in the same situation as Andre Turing also were part of the request that did that legal opinion. And they decided not to go through with it because they, they, for whatever reason, someone decided that they didn't want to have time. One person said, I, I just don't think I, have, uh, I, I should be doing it. So I just want to at least put aside some of these conspiracy theories that this is some establishment that's going out there and running and trying to get people. There were multiple people that actually met, made this request. And, you know, at the end of this, I mean, the, as a, a state representative, I mean, just to tell you what's going on down in the state house, you know, whatever happens, you know, please, we need to come together fairly quickly because it's it's pretty bad down there right now. These guys are pretty insane, and they're only going to get worse. And um, you know, there's going to be a voting on the rules, on the motions. I'm assuming, and whatever the vote goes, if it goes up or down, I mean, let's let's accept what happens there. So the debates are continuing through lunchtime. Uh, we just heard a little bit from uh, Jeff Rogers trying to field everybody's questions. Jeff Rogers, also a lawyer, uh, completely and totally disagrees with Bill Reisner, also a lawyer. One is uh, thinks it's uh, can happen, the other doesn't. From several members, a uh, couple of members of my caucus, Steve Farley from Tucson, Tom Chamber from Flagstaff, to close millions of, and actually hundreds of millions of dollars worth of special tax loopholes in this state so we can fund education fund public or fund health care and fund public safety. We have introduced a bill in the first session, Representative Appleson and Senator Sinema worked on a bill and actually passed a bill to protect the rights of mourners at funerals for their loved ones from suffering from protests by right wing extremists. Standing room only. One that will hold pro uh, private prison contractors to the same public record request that state agencies are held to. And one to make sure that every private prison facility in the state is held to the exact same standard that public prison facilities are held to. So as you can see, uh, the Republicans might have taken a greater majority down the Capitol, but we're not going to give up without a fight. I promise you that. And with that in mind, I, I want to leave on this note. I want to be brief today. But I want us to remember why we're all here today. We are all Democrats. No matter what happens today, let's keep that in mind. We may have some differences of opinion on who to support for state party chair, uh, where we want to head with the ADP, how we want to run the next election cycle, but we're all on the same team. And I, I can't stress this enough. We have a governor who says the number one priority in her, her administration is education, and then she makes the biggest cut we've ever seen education. 
We have Republican legislators who talk about the sanctity of life, yet they'd rather fund special interest tax loopholes than a $1.4 billion organ transplant program. And we have an agenda down there that is so far removed from the priorities of the hardworking families and people throughout this state that it would be a joke if it weren't such a serious matter. So at the end of the day, we're all Democrats. We're all on the same team. We came here for a reason. We want a better Arizona. I want an Arizona that protects the freedoms and the opportunities of every individual. One that values, values human life. And one that knows every child in the state deserves an adequate and effective and actually a top-notch public education, not just those who are doing it. I'm proud to be the minority leader for the House, and I'm honored and humbled by that selection by my colleagues. But most of all right now, I'm proud to be a Democrat. Thank you very much. The committee's elected membership. So to be on the state committee, you must be an elected precinct committee person. Our bylaws, Article 2, state committee says, only precinct committee persons elected at the preceding primary election shall be eligible for membership on the state committee at the statutory organizational meeting. So as much as the most wonderful Democrats in the state would love to have in the room, we want to have everybody here, state law and our bylaws that must conform to state law say you must be an elected precinct committee okay this is somewhat crazy they're trying to take these votes by hand count and there's people standing all over the place people have proxies this is to close the bullet bait hopefully the other votes are a little more professional than this I, I know we have some people here who have done the hand count audit uh, post election, post general, and get ready for elections. the nomination. How many people have uh, 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 participated in hand count audits? Voting stations that they'll be using later. They're going to be doing voting by scanning. Some scanners, and they're also going to do a hand count. So this is going to take forever. We're here. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. We might be here until seven. With as soon as possible, Ron. Good luck. All right, the name on your attorney has been put in the nomination. I'm looking for a seconder. Mr. Chair, yes. I, I second the nomination of Ron Attorney. I'm Felicia Rohini. I'm LD11 in precinct, Piccadilly Precinct. I'm here today to nominate, uh, I second the nomination of Andre Attorney because I believe he is the candidate that can lead the Arizona Democratic Party to win elections in the future because that's really what this issue, this election is about is getting a leader that can win elections uh, for Arizona for the Democrats. Uh, if you recall our last meeting uh, of the State Democratic Party, uh, it, was, it was Andre who said from the podium that we needed change and we needed major change because we had just gotten the shellacking um, and that we needed to acknowledge that. I think that for us to clean up our own backyard to unify and to, in the future, win elections and lead this state, we need a leader like Andre Cherney. Thank you, guys. Yes, of course, I'm going to give my name because I have the hardest last name in this whole entire body. <laughs> uh, my name is Ezekiel Gabrikiden. I am from LD29, Precinct 64. And today, uh, it gives me the greatest privilege to stand up and to vote for democracy. And my background, I came to this country as a refugee and worked, built my way up. Didn't know how to speak English, but today I do and write and graduate from college in chemistry. And it gives me the greatest honor, to give me the greatest honor to give a talk about my friend Rodney Glassman because I have run his campaign in Southern Arizona for many of you across the state, from one end to another. I traveled with over 30,000 miles on my car to advocate, not just for running, but for this party, for the principle that this country offers. And we are a party of election integrity. And today, Rodney, just like myself, is elected PC 
elected state committee and has done so along his busy schedule for the United States Senate. So it gives me a great pleasure. And there is one great this country stands for. United we stand, divided we fall. For those reasons, I am now made second for Rodney Glassman for this chairman position. Thank you for allowing me to give this talk. Good afternoon, everyone. First things first, I want to thank my wife, Sasha, because as you know, we ran a hard fought Senate campaign and had a baby November 17th, and she gave me permission to run for state chair. And for that, I'm greatly appreciative. I'm running for state chair because I'm excited about this party. I first got involved when I became an elected PC about 10 years ago. Martin McCall gave me the signature sheet and said, Go home, get these signed with your neighbors, and then you're going to be involved in the party. And that's what I did. And today I'm running because we deserve better. We deserve to have a party that stands for something that has a background, that has a backbone, and that is bold and unafraid. And that's why I think we need a democratic brand. How many of you believe that we're the party of education? Yeah. If we're the party of education, why last spring did our leadership not have the wherewithal to endorse Proposition 100? How many of you think we're the party of jobs? Yeah. Then why? Why is it that we get email after email about how bad Jan Brewer is, but we don't hear about the power plant built, being built up north with labor from Massachusetts? If we are the party of jobs and education and renewable energy, then we need to have a brand that stands for it. So we're all talking about the same thing, so that people can be excited about being Democrats. We have over 100 local elected officials across this state. But they don't leave their speeches with the word Democrat, because what does it mean? We have to stand for something. We have council people, we have school board members, and if we had a democratic brand, then they could go into groups and they could say, we stand for this. This is what we're about. We're about inclusiveness. We're about jobs. We're about equality. But it starts by leadership of the state party. And lastly, we need a 30 district strategy. We need a 30 district strategy. We need 90 candidates running for the state legislature. I don't know what the map in 2012 is going to look like, but what I can tell you is that when Ann Wallach ran for Senate, when Ann Wallach ran for Senate from Maricopa County, she got 30,000 votes from Democrats. That's more votes than all of our Democratic Party state leadership and the legislature put together. If we want to get Democrats elected across our state, we need 90 legislative candidates, $30,000 apiece. That's almost $3 million of clean elections money. And if we had a brand, and if we had local elected officials excited, and if we had 90 legislative candidates, we will win in 2012. And it's my commitment to volunteer and help everyone get elected in 2011. Because if we have more city council members, more school board members, and more supervisors, and more mayors, it's going to be like sticking dynamite all over the state. So that when 2012 comes up, we have excitement, we have energy. I'm a grassroots volunteer. That's why I'm running for a chain chair. I am like all of you. I participated in the process. I have strong ideas. And if you want to have a state chair, if you believe, that's why my stickers don't have my name. Because this isn't about Andre Turney, it's not about Ronnie Glassman, it's not about Don Bibb, it's not even about the process. This party is about what we believe. And so if you believe that you would like to have a party that has a strong democratic brand, that means jobs, that means education, that means inclusivity, if you would like to have a state chair that works with all of the local elected officials across our state and gets them excited about being Democrats, and if you would like to have 90 legislative candidates and you're willing to get in the car with me and drive to Kingman and drive to Prescott and drive to Nogales to collect $5 contributions so everyone can qualify, if you believe that that's the party that we belong to, then I ask for your vote. I ask for your vote today, and then for the next two years, I ask you to work with me, with me, to make this vision a reality. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next candidate for state chair, Andre Turney. Of this party. 
But the answer I gave myself last night, and the answer I'm giving you today, is the answer of why I decided to do this in the first place. 35 years ago, I wasn't standing up in a suit or anything like this. I was in a one-bedroom apartment with two parents who were recent immigrants. A family where unemployment benefits and food stamps were what made the difference for us when times were tough. And because of good public schools and good, good public school teachers, because of public libraries and good parks, because of Pell Grants and federal student loans, I was able to go from a kid whose parents didn't speak any English, any English to working for the, white, for the White House with the President of the United States. America because of the Democratic Party. It stands up for public schools. One party that says immigrants are a strength, not a weakness. That one party is the Democratic Party, the party that we are here today to save and rebuild and grow. That's what this election is about. That's what we have to do going forward. Yeah. We all know what's at stake. Four years ago, Jan Napolitano and Terry Goddard were re-elected with more than 60% of the vote. And Terry Goddard is here, and we should give him a big round of applause.
thank you all, and uh, I am looking forward to working with all of you in the weeks and months to come. We have so much at stake, we have so much to do, and it's going to require all of us doing our best and putting our best effort forward, and it's going to require us to be one party.